Carissa Grimm is a stay-at-home mom of two kids, a military wife, and she's lost 125 pounds with intermittent fasting. So thank you for being here, uh, Carissa, and, and coming on to share your story. Uh, why don't you just give people an introduction? Who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Carissa Grimm. I am a wife and a mother to two very busy boys. Uh, we are Americans living abroad in the UK currently. And I'm just kind of a busy mom. Uh, so I don't have a job right now, but I uh, have the full-time job of keeping up with our busy schedule. Awesome, awesome. So why don't you give us a rundown of how you have found success with weight loss. So how much have you lost and uh, how long did it take and what have you been doing? So this time, the successful time, I started um, really thinking about weight loss in November of 2018. And I got stuck in that planning phase. Um, but since getting my butt into action, then now I've lost 125 pounds. And really, um, along the way, like the biggest things, um, the first 70 pounds were solely intermittent fasting and walking. Mm -hmm. That was all I did. I kept busy uh, walking and I started with a 16-8 window. And then for a really long time, I ate OMAD. Mm -hmm. And it just, it fit my lifestyle. It fit how I like to eat. Um, and that's changed and evolved over time. Um, but yeah, it started really just as simple as can be, just intermittent fasting and walking. Mm -hmm. So now you said you were doing OMAD and then it's evolved since then. So take us through that. What has that evolution looked like and what, what have your results been during that time? So my life now is very, very active. I never would have, I would have left. November, 2018, me writing goals would have left. At how busy and active we are now. And um, so, like I said, the first 70 pounds was just intermittent fasting and walking. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I got a trainer because I've always wanted one of the goals. One of the first goals I wrote down was I wanted to lift weights and feel strong. So I didn't want to go by myself and get hurt. So as a gift to myself, I purchased that amount of training sessions so I could learn really good form and start lifting weights. Um, so I do that very regularly now. Um, I also took up martial arts. I took up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, so that's very active. And I do that four times a week on top of the weight training I do. And on my rest days, I still walk because it's still the exercise I like to do. I still walk all the time. Um, so with that, my caloric intake got more than what I could eat in one meal. I was very comfortable on OMAD. I would say probably for over a year, I ate OMAD just because it worked. Um, very like not harsh on rules. So going out with lunch with friends was no big deal. I just get back to home the next day. Um, now, just due to my caloric needs, um, I have to eat more. So I have to eat um, at least twice a day. Um, so I don't really keep track of like windows anymore, um, more so that I just know that I need more food. Mm -hmm. um, but I stopped even even eating OMAD. It felt weird telling people I intermittent fasted because it was just kind of like how I ate, like the normal part of my life. Mm -hmm. I stopped being somewhere. I want to say January, maybe February of this year, it stopped feeling like a diet. Mm -hmm. It really did. And it just started feeling like my life. Mm -hmm. Like I go to the gym all the time because I really enjoy it. And I do jujitsu because I really like it. And I eat what I'm sure a lot of people would be considered at odd eating window, but it's just how I eat now. It's not a diet. It's not something I have to force myself to do. Mm -hmm. If anything, sometimes I have to force myself to eat the calories earlier so I can get them in. But yeah, so a lot's changed and being very relaxed mm -hmm. and not being in the beginning, I think everyone gets very stringent and like we set timers and we're very focused. Um, but as you get more into it, I think definitely just sort of relaxing and getting, I don't need to eat OMAD, you know, or in a specific window. I just need to be mindful of when I'm eating and how much I'm eating. Mm -hmm. So OMAD and intermittent fasting really helped just take away some variables and let me focus on that. So on that, did you restrict certain types of foods or like say, well, I'm not going to eat sweets or anything like that? Absolutely not. Especially when I first started. Uh, my OMAD meals would be Burger King. 
and cookies. It was, that was the rule. Like when I, I first switched to OMAD, um, not really intentionally so much as the 18.6 was super, super natural for me. Like I already didn't like eating breakfast. So finding a diet plan or anything where breakfast wasn't the most important meal of the day was actually kind of a relief. Mm -hmm. um, and then just sort of naturally that window, I want to say it did not take very long at all. That window kind of shrank because I found my tolerance for it was really high. And then just one day, I think we were busy and I ended up eating OMAD that day. And then like, that was just it since then. And like I said, spaghetti and meatballs, just whatever. Um, I did find over time because I was eating one meal a day, like I would, and I never felt like I restricted, but like, it was like, oh, maybe I should make sure I'm getting like a good amount of vegetables. <laughs> since I'm only eating once a day, or maybe I should make sure there's protein mm -hmm. in it since I'm only eating once a day. So I feel like over time, my diet changed just very naturally and intuitively to what like I would be craving or what I needed. Um, but even to this day, uh, my kids, how I set the menu is they get to pick one dinner a week. That's always been the deal in our house. So one meal a week, it's usually some sort of pasta or pizza and it still works and I'm not, I'm not ever worried about it because it just, it works. I don't have to worry. That's awesome. So, uh, what is your daily routine? Like, do you have a, a pretty set like schedule? Yes, I am a, have to be scheduled and organized. So I wake up and I wake up quite a bit earlier before my children, just cause I like to wake up, have me time. Um, I journal. I'm also like, I read the Bible. That's me personally, but just whatever you do in the morning to sort of you know, bring it to, we're going to have a good day. So I do that in the morning mm -hmm. and then I wake my kids up and it's just a mess of getting everyone breakfast and getting everyone where they need to go. And then I get them off to school and I go to the gym or if it's like an off day or a rest day, I go for a walk right there. And then it's just the most natural feeling thing. If I don't get it out of the way, then I don't feel as great. And then I come home and I shower and I start you know, mom stuff, cleaning the house, prepping everyone's bags for whatever event we're doing in that evening. Uh, lots of times I end up cooking in the middle of the afternoon because it's easier to get dinner made then and just have it ready for later uh, for how busy we are. Mm -hmm. um, and then usually in the evening is when I get like my jujitsu or my like a higher form of, I would never go running. Like the people who run or do intentional cardio on top of working out, Jiu-Jitsu tricks me into it. It's cardio, it's work, but I like it. Um, so in the evenings, we usually have either football or jujitsu or something going on. Um, and then we come home and we try to get away from all the technology, put it all down, sit, have a little bit of time as a family. And then the kids go to bed and then I get some alone time with my husband. And then I'm really solidly like 10 o'clock, I start <laughs> dozing off. And so, is that how your life always looked like when, when you were, when you were, uh, before you started losing the weight, were you really structured like that? You woke up early every morning and journaled and all that? No, no. Um, the biggest difference, if I had to say like, what's the difference? What's, what made it stick this time? What worked this time? I started prioritizing myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and the way I can do that, the way I can do that is by getting everything figured out ahead of time. So, and I, I put myself as important. I'm, I'm important. My needs are important. Me getting to the gym, me having that time in the morning to sort of situate myself. Those are important things. So I've structured, like the structure was built around the fact that I needed to make sure that I was taking time for myself. I was not good at that. I was good at taking care of everybody else. Um, including not just my family, but in the community, I do a lot of volunteer work and it makes you feel good. And I was, previously before um husband and kids I was very independent I worked full-time I went to school full-time mm -hmm. I still did that after having my first son it wasn't until I had my second son we moved to Germany mm -hmm. that I became a full-time stay-at-home mom and wife and I didn't know what to do with myself mm -hmm. um so that's when I just became I think I needed the value I needed to feel like I contributed mm -hmm. so I started doing things mm -hmm. in the community fundraising whatever in the school anything I could get my hands on Mm -hmm. to stay active and feel like I had value. And recently, last year-ish, I would say, well, definitely, it was a lot because in order to prioritize myself, I had to step down from some positions. And that involved looking internally mm -hmm. and knowing I have value, just me, just existing, I have value. I do not need to raise $100,000 for the community to have value. I 
have value, just existing. And I'm allowed to prioritize myself and maybe not help every single person who asks. So that was a big turning point, being able to value. And that's, like I said, the structure came around. It's the only way. Mm -hmm. If I was going to prioritize myself, I had to write it in because it's far too easy to get busy and the kids need this and these people need this paper. Like, so structuring out time for yourself is probably one of the biggest things that's helped me. So uh, give us a little backstory about your weight. Has this been something like a recent struggle for you or has it been a lifelong thing? You know, I think for the longest time, you would think it was lifelong. I always felt like overweight or chubby. And then you look back at pictures and you were like, no, you just weren't tiny. Like all of my little friends were no, pro I love all of them still to this day, but I had some very tiny friends growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I did gradually um, put on weight over the years. Um, after having my son, my first son, I probably put on mm, not that much. Second son, again, climbed up higher, but still I wasn't above uh, 200. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was I didn't enjoy living in Louisiana. So first we moved to Germany, then we moved to Louisiana, then we moved to England. I didn't enjoy Louisiana as much. I didn't reach out and make as many friends. So it wasn't like the most motivational time period. And I put on a good amount of weight there. Um, but the most that happened was probably the first year we lived here in England. That's when I really climbed up. Um, I took on everything. I got, we moved here. I jumped in feet first. I was helping with multiple projects that was involved in all of the school things. Like there was an event at the school, I was there. And um, I really lost sight of myself completely. And then, like I said, um, the big, big project I worked on ended in November and I felt so awful and scared. Like I felt scared at how bad I felt off of just like the event was just one weekend mm -hmm. and I worked that whole weekend and I was exhausted. My feet were killing me. It was scary. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I looked at the scale for the first time in a really long time, and it said 300.9 pounds. And I was like, oh, we're in the 300s now. So something needs to change. Mm -hmm. So that was, like I said, it sort of slowly went up since having kids. Um, but then that year, I probably, if I had to guess, I would say I probably put on 40 pounds from March 2018 to November 2018. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So was very busy and stressful. So was was that the moment where you said, okay, something's gotta change when, when you actually got on the scale? Um, no, because that's when I got on the scale and I saw the number mm -hmm. a little bit before that. Um, like I said, leading up to that period and how bad I felt, um, I was having issues even with mobility. Mm -hmm. So at that point when I actually faced the scale, cause like, took me a little while. Um, I had already cut out soda mm -hmm. and was trying to move a little more. Mm -hmm. And I was already sort of in like that researchy phase of like, well, how am I going to do this? So I don't really know. I doubt it could be a ton of weight or if any at all had come off, but it was um, something like small things, like something would fall on the floor and just bending over to pick it up. Like my mobility, like my stomach was in the way. Mm -hmm. and my grandmother has been fighting cancer pretty much the my entire life that I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, my aunt has non-Hopkins lymphoma. My mom has had many, many benign tumors to the point where she needed a total hysterectomy. Oh. And I'd already not been feeling great. And I saw this statistic that said obesity puts you at a higher risk for like seven extra cancers. Mm -hmm. And it was really that. Like my grandma, her cancer had just come back. Mm -hmm. And I felt I was feeling, really feeling the weight for the first time. So in the back of my mind, I think that was the moment. It took me a while to get brave enough to get on the scale, to start looking into things. But that was that, like, her cancer are coming back and just feeling very, very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. That was when I knew I needed to do something. Mm -hmm. I needed to. So what are some challenges you still face? Oh, I don't think it'll ever go away. When I get stressed, when I'm, things are stressful, it is much easier for me to focus on everybody else. How helpful 
can I become? Because it doesn't feel like self-sabotage when you've just signed up to do like six extra things, like you're helping people. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what I'm doing is not working on myself. Mm -hmm. So, and then like the guilt with turning things down or needing to take time with myself. Mm -hmm. Like there's some guilt that I deal with with that, but it just, I feel like it'll always come down to it. It's very easy for me to just become very helpful to everyone around me and become too busy to meal plan for the week or focus on budgeting or, you know, taking time for myself. Like it's, I think that'll just, my defense mechanism, the thing I struggle with is uh, not dealing with it by helping other people. <laughs> mm. What is one piece of advice you would give to someone out there, they're starting on their weight loss journey, maybe they're having a hard time, what would you tell them? Go slow, mm. like slow down. It's very easy to want to do everything or to research everything. And reality is you don't have to be perfect. A hundred kind of okay days are way better than three perfect days. Mm. Like, so slowing down, realizing that you have time, it feels like, it needs to happen right now. When you're scared of dying, you feel like you need to get the weight off right away. You need to be, and that urgency causes like, well, I need to be perfect. You don't need to be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect diet. There's no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey. I've, my, you know, my little tracker, I do track daily. So my tracker goes like this very commonly. Like it's not, it doesn't happen fast. Mm -hmm. But when it happens and you look back, it's shocking. You can't believe the changes you've made, but mm -hmm. it's okay for it to take time. Mm -hmm. I set, when I set my goal, I set goals. I wrote them all out. Um, and in here, I set a goal for how much time I wanted to take to lose the weight. And I gave myself five years. I had done the math that someone very wise suggested you do to take the math of how long it took you to raise, uh, to get to your highest weight. I did the math and it'd take me 4.8 years or no, I'm sorry. It took me 17 years mm -hmm. to get up to my highest weight. Mm -hmm. So I did the math of how long it would take feasibly. If I just lost half a pound a week, mm -hmm. how long would it take? Almost five years. So I just, at that moment I was like, okay, I have five years. Mm -hmm. And here I am two years later and I've, done pretty well. Right. You've done great. <laughs> okay. So is there anything else you want to share? I do want to say thank you. Um, when this all started that November, that scary time, um, I did, had no plans. I'd done no research. Um, I'd heard on someone else's podcast, I think like um, Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. someone was talking about intermittent fasting. And the idea of not eating breakfast, I was like, oh, I don't like breakfast. So this could work for me. I was intrigued by it. And when you Google search it or you look it on YouTube, you find a lot of very, very fit people mm -hmm. trying to optimize their nutrition for that last like 3% body fat they're trying to get off. And I was like, oh, well, maybe this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. So I searched one day in the YouTube bar, intermittent fasting, normal woman. <laughs> That's what I searched. And one of your videos came up okay. and I'm so glad that your approach, because everyone else is very hard, very stringent, like no creamer in your coffee, no whatever. Like there's so many rules and your videos were just like, Hey, do what you need to do to get through the day. <laughs> it's all right. And you just looked kind of like me. Like I could relate so much that intermittent fasting didn't need to be for super crazy athletic people. Mm -hmm. It could be for a regular mom who was scared and wanted to try something. And for me, that something, it worked. Like I remember the day sitting down eating dinner with my family being like, I think I can do this for the rest of my life. This isn't hard. It doesn't have to be hard. So like your videos and your approach of it just, it doesn't need to be hard. If it's hard, how can we make it easier? Like what steps can we take that? I mean, I apply that logic everywhere now to everything I do. Like if something's too hard, like what do I need to do to make it easier? Or do I need to change altogether? Hmm. Like the concept of hard work and gritting teeth. And I think that's maybe why a lot of people do fail when they try certain things, mm -hmm. um, rather than just taking a step back and be like, how can I make this easier? And for me, you started me down that path just with simple concepts. Like, doesn't have to be hard. Well, 
That's awesome. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming on and sharing your story. Um, if people would like to get in touch with you, is there a way that they can do that? Um, I have an Instagram. Okay. Um, it's grim.panda. Grim.panda? Panda, like the bear. Okay. <laughs> I'm very creative, I know. All right. Fantastic. So you can go follow that Instagram account because you said you post project, uh, pro progress pictures, right? I do. I post progress pictures. Like I said, I've, I've really, I'm not on a weight loss journey anymore. So if you're looking for that, maybe not the person to follow. But if you want to watch a regular mom try to go to the gym and get stronger, um, I'm getting ready to start a new program for strength training and I'll be posting like progress pictures and my body's still changing. I'm not at a perfectly normal, healthy weight. Um, that's just no longer my focus. I really like, I still track my weight, but I could live the rest of my life at the weight I'm currently at and be very happy. Um, but I would like to build some strength because I think that's pretty cool that, um, you can do that, that I can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's pretty much what gets posted there is me, uh, trying to give up. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carissa, uh, for being here and for sharing your story. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview. If you consider yourself an intermittent fasting success story and you'd like to share your story on this channel, be sure to reach out. Simply use the link to the Google form down in the description.